McKinsey and this is Melly. Today we have with us Marion Sanson, who is the Green Party's representative in the upcoming Monganui election. Thank you, Marion, for coming in today. Can you please tell the St George's community about yourself? Thank you, Millie and Mackenzie. Yes, I came from Wellington in 2015. I've been a member of the Green Party since 2006. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying being out there and meeting people as part of this campaign. Why did you join the Green Party? I remember at my home looking out the window and seeing a tiake, a saddleback, you know, with the golden, the um, orange feathers on its back outside on a little bush. It had just come out of the Karori Sanctuary or Zelandia. And I called my two children to ha come and have a look. And, but I thought, oh gosh, it's, it's such risk. The predators we've introduced being in our urban environment I just thought we've got to do something to protect nature. And then I started to think which political party um, would help. And the Greens, I could see that their values were the ones that would help. In um, 2013, I went along to a, a Green Party summer conference where we talked about policy. You were talking about opinions before. Well, policy is... Um, Everybody's opinions brought together, plus some actions that we're going to do, based around a vision. So the Green Party has a vision um, of caring for um, the planet and for the and for people. So I went to this um, policy meeting and met Eugenie Sage was there. She's been the Minister of Conservation. She was talking about the good things that the Green Party was doing and would do to protect nature. Also, um, Jeanette Fitzsimons was there, and um, she was talking about one of the Green Party's values um, and, and, and principles for action, which is um, social responsibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was saying the Earth's resources are limited. We need to be fair about the way we use them so there's enough to meet everyone's needs and also to make sure nature has enough to thrive. So um, that that and after that, I st I was knocking on the doors at the for the 2017 election, and it was really great talking with people about the Green Party's policies. So yeah, I've um, become more involved in uh, Green Party policy development since then. What have you been doing prior to campaigning? Oh, I was just going to say something about um, why I was standing. I forgot to cover that. So um, the um, it's, it's about articulating the Green Party's policies and um, making sure the Green Party is visible in this election campaign. So, yeah, prior to the campaign, I... Um, came to Whanganui to work as a lawyer in, uh, at CLAW, Community Law. And um, anyone can go to CLAW for legal advice, but um, CLAW particularly helps people who, um, who have low, have, don't have much in the way of the ability to pay a lawyer to help them. So CLAW helps them. So I, I saw that, that, yeah, many people were struggling. And then if they got into legal difficulties, it, made things worse for them. So it's wonderful to have this um, um, support legal services in the community. Um, so I was doing that and um, working to help, particularly with a focus on seniors um, in our community. And the Green Party um, places a high value on people being able to write through their lives to, to thrive and be active and contribute to our community. And um, so I, along with others, we established the Whanganui Welfare Guardian Trust and that helps people who've lost the ability to make their own decisions. Um, I've also involved in environment law because that's a bit of a passion of mine and um, I got involved in a court case to save the Te Waikoro Pupu Springs which are just out of Takaka in the South Island. 
I think the farmers didn't realise that the um, nitrate fertiliser they were putting on their fields and their paddocks to uh, grow the grass was um, also getting down into the aquifer and polluting the beautiful water that comes gushing out at the springs. So um, our organisation, Save Our Springs, um, went to the Environment Court asking the court to um, set in place limits and, and um, steps to protect Te Waikorupupu Springs. And as a result, a water conservation order has been recommended and we hope the springs will be better looked after in the future. Um, I was also involved with the living wage because um, it's clear that um, if employers can get away with paying and getting enough workers who work at the minimum wage, then, then they'll do so. But the minimum wage actually isn't enough for people to um, meet their needs, um, so, uh, their needs for themselves and their families. Um, so that, that is something that, that's ongoing to make sure that people get a living wage. How is your campaign going? Good. Well, um, the green team has a uh, stall at the market, but even prior to that, I was um, down at Majestic Square with a group of us, Fridays for Future, and um, this movement was started by Greta Thunberg, you might have heard of her, and um, so every Friday, turning up to talk with people about uh, climate action, because um, there's no doubt now that we are, there are three crises going on, the climate, loss of biodiversity, that's all the um, flora and fauna that, um, uh, look, that's in nature, and also pollution. But we were particularly focused on climate change. And initially when we started talking with people, a lot would say, oh, I'm fine, <laughs> and what climate crisis? But unfortunately, after Cyclone Gabriel and the um, the floods in Auckland over anniversary weekend, a lot, I noticed a lot more people are stopping and talking about what can we do about this. And so um, the answer I'm giving them is um, it's really important how you vote this election. Um, this election may be the last chance we have to elect a government that will mobilise New Zealanders to take action on climate. Um, otherwise, it, we're, we're, go we're not going to be able to stay within that 1.5, limit of 1.5 degrees warming. And um, as I think the Secretary General of the United Nations said recently, we're going to be into boiling. Um, so, yeah, the campaign. Um, and also, I realise that, um, I mean, people are very concerned about the cost of living, and I understand that. But actually, climate change is going to impact on cost of living because it's going to make food more difficult to grow, more difficult to get products to, to market as um, roads get blocked or um, impassable. And, you know, just the cost of um, repairing when, when communities like the Esk Valley get inundated um, is going to push up costs. So climate change is becoming a driver for cost of living. And I suppose I've got three images I wanted to share with you. Um, one is sadly the emperor penguins. They only breed in Antarctica. They're the biggest penguin. But in 2022, there was a loss of ice in the areas where they have their colonies, where they have their babies. And yeah, the ice melted. And really all of their, the chicks, uh, none of them survived. They either drowned or froze to death. Um, and and that, that, was, uh, that was one. And then at a United Nations um, meeting about climate change, the leader from Nui, he stood in a big bucket and people poured in water and the water went up his legs and he said, this is what it's like with climate change for us and we didn't do this, you guys are doing it. And then, yeah, the Esk Valley, people's homes, the water just went through it, um, a, a, a big pile of sodden bedding with a teddy on top, I saw it on the news. So, yeah, what do these three images have in common? Yes, casualties of climate inaction, really, our 
emissions are causing this. What has the Green Party achieved in the past six years? Well, over the past six years, the Green Party, thanks to our increased numbers of Green MPs, we've been part of government. And um, the, one of the focuses, a big focus, is climate change. And James Shaw, who's our co-leader, he's um, been Minister of Climate Change, and he's been really working to get climate emissions down um, under the um, zero carbon um, framework that we've been, there's a plan and there's emission budgets and he's been working across government and also with some of the major industries that put out emissions um, to bring those down and um, you know that um, agriculture is one of our big big sectors, 50% of our greenhouse gas emissions are from agriculture and also uh, transport so with agriculture, um, we've got um, some measures to um, encourage farmers. Both um, we'd like them to um, measure their carbon and take steps to reduce it, ideally by reducing the size of dairy herds, um, also um, reducing the amount of, of fertiliser they use. So there's all that going on, work going on with the farmers. And then in, in um, transport, and this is probably more immediate for you, we're trying to get people to use active transport. So I cycled here today and I could see a lineup of bicycles at um, St George's, which is great. That's a very active form of transport, zero emissions. And, um, and the other thing is more people on, on buses if, if um, they, they need to um, go longer distances on, on a bu bus, but also bringing in rail. We'd like to um, uh, more funding for Kiwi Rail uh, to move more um, heavy produce on rail and provide regional transport routes for people on electric rail. Oh, and I just saw that Auckland now has elect more electric buses. So... Um, yeah, those are two areas where the Green Party has made, made progress. Um, other things we've done during the COVID period, um, jobs for nature, thousands more jobs, more people um, got involved in jobs in the outdoors, gaining new skills in project management and um, um, construction and, and work like that. Um, also, um, we've... Um, We've been looking at rentals because a lot of people do rent their, their homes and so the healthy home standards have made homes warmer and drier and also uh, measures to give, um, oh, there goes Kiwi Rail, <laughs> measures to um, um, p ensure people have more security in their rental homes. And we would do more in this regard um, if, we, if we're um, able to in the next government. We've ended new and offshore oil and gas drilling as well because um, that, that's, that, that's a big source of emissions. And I'm pleased to say that our greenhouse gas emissions, John, James was able to say recently that the trend was downwards. So that's progress. <laughs> 